difference between a full frame sensor and a smaller sensor? How, how they behave? Which one is behaving better in good lighting conditions and which one is not? Let's talk about it a little bit and uh, let's see what's going on. Just let us escape and fly away tonight from Blue Sky Photography and today I'd like to talk to you about full frame sensors and smaller sensors, APS-C size in general. Uh, I saw a video a few days ago and it was a discussion uh, after the video in the comments down below that uh, it was a misunderstanding. Somebody told that a 300mm lens on a Micro Four Thirds camera, it will be the same like a 600 millimeter lens on a full frame, both of them f4. So we started to talk about, and and I also commented down below, and uh, then I realized that some people they don't understand uh, some differences between the sensors and and how they behave in different lighting conditions. Now, as you know, I am a big fan of uh, APS-C size sensor, but that doesn't mean that I don't know in which area the full frame sensor is better than the APS-C size sensor. So uh, what I want to do today, I just make a short video, uh, just kind of informative video, just uh, so you can realize what's the, the difference in between the full frame and the APS-C size if you don't know about that. Now I have to mention here that uh, I am also human, so uh, this is how I know and this is how I understand everything. And if you think that it's it's not true, or if you think that uh, uh, you can add something constructive to this, please uh, do it. Leave a comment down below and uh, uh, let's discuss it in a in a polite manner, you know. Uh, because the only reason I do this video to uh, to help others to understand which sensor is better in which situation and, and uh, which sensor is not so good in. Some situations. So um, anyway, let's talk about uh, uh, the sensors. So first of all, the full frame sensor obviously it is bigger than the APS-C or the Micro Four Thirds or whatever. That means because it is bigger, it will gather more light, like uh, like the APS-C or Micro Four Thirds, like the smaller sensors. Uh, that is is physically true because it's obvious when when something is bigger and something is smaller, you know, it will, it will gather more light, so that's true. But, when we make a picture, and uh, both of the cameras, let's talk about APS-C and full frame, because it will be confusing, you know, if all the time uh, we talk about a lot of formats. So APS-C and full frame. So if you take two cameras with the same lens, and I will show you some pictures in a minute over here. So you take two cameras and two lens, and put in the same scenario, and you use the same aperture, same uh, shutter speed, same ISO, and you will see that both of the pictures will be the same exposed. Now, that doesn't mean that the full frame sensor doesn't gather more light like the APS-C size. Some people, they will think, yes, the exposure is the same, so that means that it's equal. No, it's not equal. The full frame will gather more light than the APS-C, but the APS-C size sensor will, uh, will uh, bring it up from ISO to be the same exposure. But that's not an issue, that's not a problem, because I always say that I only care about the differences where my clients can realize the difference. So if I'm a professional photographer and I work for somebody and somebody pay money for me, for my services, then I have to do my best to do the best job possible for him. So if he notices some differences in my work because I use a smaller sensor and not a full frame sensor, that's a problem. So then you have to use a full frame sensor. But until my client doesn't realize that I, I, I shoot that wedding with an APS-C size or a full frame, that's not an issue. And let's talk about this uh, ISO thing a little bit more. So. Um, 
what I will do, I will, uh, I will uh, bring you into my computer as usual. You know, we just go in and, and we see some pictures I did in the, in the same scenario with three cameras. And you can see what I'm talking about. So let's get into my computer and let's see what's going on. So we are in my computer now and as you can see, we open up uh, Zoner Photo Studio 18 and uh, here are two pictures. Now, these pictures were made in, in, uh, in a camera shop, just corner of the camera shop. And you can see on the right side over here the settings. So you see ISO 400, 1, 1 25th of a second, F4 and 55, and this is the 55mm Zeiss lens. So this was made with a Sony, this we are talking about the picture on the right side here, you can see the red, the red uh, uh, lines over the picture. So it was, this picture was made with the Sony A7 Mark II. So this is a full frame. Now this picture, as you see, the same settings, ISO 400, 1 125th of a second, F4, 55mm, the same lens, and it's made with the Sony A6000. And as you can see over here, both of the pictures are uh, the same, exposed. I mean, there's no difference. One is full frame, one is crop. But this doesn't mean that the full frame sensor doesn't gather more light. It gathers more light, obviously, than the, the APS-C size. And here what I always say, but uh, let's, let's show you another picture. So, Here's another picture. This is again, this you can see here the Sony A6000 and the same settings ISO 400 1, uh, 125th of a second f4, 55mm. And this is with the A7R 36 megapixel and ISO 400, the same settings everywhere. And you can see that here the exposure is the same. Now, let's understand something. Just because it looks the same, that doesn't mean that it is the same. You cannot see the difference, that's true. And that's why I always say that you are not uh, kind of forced to buy a full frame. Because you won't really notice the difference. You will notice the difference if you, uh, if you uh, just zoom into 100% or maybe more. But if not, you won't really notice the difference. But, in the same time, you can you can do something on the APS-C size camera or even on Micro Four Thirds, which one will bring your sensor up to the same level, like the full frame. And I will explain you what. So, uh, let's say we are talking about uh, uh, f1.8, yeah? Let's say we are using a, an f1.8 prime on a full frame. Okay, now with the APS-C size to be the same, regarding the aperture and ISO and everything, you have to use a one-stop faster glass because APS-C size sensors, they are kind of one-stop lower in ISO in low light capability, like the full frame. So if the full frame, uh, you can make a shot with ISO 6400 and you have uh, almost nothing noise, then the APS-C size camera can do about ISO 3200, the same uh, quality shot in ISO. I'm talking about the low light capability now. So, if you want to, to make it up to the full frame, that means that you have to use a faster glass. So in this case, we are talking about 1.8 on a full frame, then you have to use a 1.4 or a 1.2 even better on the APS-C. And then you get the same depth of field, you get the same ISO because your exposure will be obviously lighter. So uh, you, can, you can reduce the ISO and then obviously you, uh, you will avoid the noise. So your picture will be the same quality as the full frame. But uh, if we go to micro four thirds, that means that you have to do a two stop faster lens, you have to put a two-stop faster lens on the, uh, on the Micro Four Thirds camera than on the full frame. So, it's very important to understand this, that sometimes people, they say, yes, I have a, a, a the example of myself, I have a 50 to 100 uh, zoom lens f1.8 on my APS-C size camera. And yes, that's true, that will act like a 70 to 200 
Well, not because that is like a 75 to 150, so the, the, the zoom range will be a bit different. But aperture and ISO wise, it will act like an f2.8 zoom lens on a full frame. So I will obviously I will have brighter exposures, but I can pull down the ISO and then I will have the same quality picture as on a full frame. But this is only happening when you adjust from lenses. Because otherwise, if you must have the same shutter speed, then the only only place you can adjust is the aperture. So if if uh, if you can go down with the aperture because you have faster glass, that means that you have an advantage on the ISO. So you can reduce the ISO. I just wanted to I just wanted to uh, to show you these pictures just to to realize that yes, because of the pictures they look the same that doesn't mean that the full frame sensor doesn't get a more light we don't see that obviously you don't see that so this is not a not a not a deal breaker if you want to buy a, an APS-C size camera because you won't really notice the difference until you go up to ISO 6400 or, or depends what kind of APS-C size sensor you are using but with the Nikon D7200 let's say that until I go to ISO 3200, it's not an issue. It's no problem at all. It, I mean, the, the noise is handled very well. So, I think that uh, that uh, this is a, uh, a solution where you can adjust that difference between the full frame and the APS-C if you have faster glass on the camera. So, if you want to use APS-C size sensors, that's not an issue at all. You can do it. You can do the same job like with the full frame if you have a faster glass on it. Now, obviously, if you are using the, uh, the example Canon has the 85mm 1.2 lens on a full frame, it will be a little bit hard to get an 85mm 0.95 aperture on a, on a crop sensor. So, uh, it, it is kind of, you know, the situation where you cannot adjust. But if you are using a, a zoom lens, the example, on a, on a full frame f2.8, then you can adjust by using a faster glass on the APS-C. So, I hope this was helpful to you and I hope that uh, uh, you can understand better. Uh, if you have some constructive comment, please leave it down below and uh, like I told you many, many times, I'm only a human being and I can make mistakes. So, uh, I hope that I can help others with my knowledge because that's the only reason I do these videos. And uh, I hope that you have a lovely day and see you later in the next video. Take care, guys. Come save me My knees are feeling